book of James is the fifth and ninth book in the Bible. Uh, it was the 20th book in the New Testament. It was written about 49 AD. James, the brother of Jesus the Christ. Let me say that one more time. James, the brother of Jesus the Christ. James, a true servant of God. James, a true servant of our Lord Jesus the Christ. James was writing to the scattered church. He was writing to the people who were detached outside of Palestine due to persecution. He was writing to those outside of the city. Uh, one thing I found out in these few years of living is that you will find yourselves outcast really fast as soon as you truly start living for God. Now I said truly living for God. Uh, because, see, a lot of us are just living for ourselves. You're only living wanting God to help you. But I asked this question this morning. Well, when are you going to live to help God? Think about that one for a second. When are you going to live to help God? But when you truly start living for God, I found out that people will try their very best to hurt you. When you truly start living for God, I found out that you will end up on somebody's hit list. When you truly start living for God, I found out that people will try their very best to de deter you from your dedication, from your commitment, and from your your best efforts of living for God. Mm -hmm. But as the writers of 1 Peter expresses it, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. Is there anybody out there that know that name? If you know that name, what is that name? Jesus is that name. See, the enemy does not attack or come after the people he already have. Let me say that one more time so y'all can understand this. The people that the, the enemy does not attack or come after the people he already have. For the people that the enemy already possess, they are already living a hellish lifestyle already. The enemy does not attack or come after the people he already captured. For the enemy is very selfish and he is greedy. Now, I need you to listen to me, and I need you to listen to me very clear. The enemy want what is his, but the enemy want what is of God to become his. Mm. Now, I can take that one all kind of places, but I don't have the time to give it to you all today. So we'll leave that for Wednesday morning, Wednesday night, or early Sunday morning. That'll be what? Bible study or Sunday school. Some of y'all getting it. Please show up. The enemy only attacks what is not his. See, everyone in here should know right from wrong. So what I found out is that when you are pursuing righteousness, which is trying your very best to make all the right decisions according to the word of God. Let me say that one, one more time. When you are pursuing righteousness, which is trying your very best to, to give, I mean, which is trying your very best to make all the, the right decisions according to the word of God. When you are in that pursuit, you will find yourselves going through more valleys, more storms, more problems than most people. And the reasons why you are going through these series of events, the reasons why you are going through these trials and tribulations, well, the reason is simple. It's simply because you care. You simply care about doing the right things. The enemy wants to take your care from you. The enemy knows that it is your attitude. The enemy knows that it is your passion, that it is your love, that it is your care that is driving you to do the right things. The enemy main objective is to get you to that mindset of I don't give a Crap, stay safe. He wants you to get to that mindset of I don't care. 
Y'all know whenever something seems too hard to handle, the first thing we're screaming is, I don't care. I give up. Y'all know whenever you're doing something wrong and you get caught or you get exposed, the second thing you're screaming is, well, I don't care. But see, if you didn't care, you wouldn't go to the screen to hide it. So you do care. When you have developed that attitude of, I don't give a crap, that's when you have allowed the enemy to conform your mind. The enemy now has power over you. The enemy wants you to give up the pursuit. He wants you to throw in the towel. See, the enemy knows this thing about the three A's. The three A's, the three A's. That's, that's attitude, amplitude, and altitude. Attitude is defined as the way you think and feel about someone or something. Yes, everything starts in the mind with how you think and feel. That is your attitude. Your aptitude is defined as a natural ability to do something or learn something. See, if you don't think or feel that something is important or something have any value, then you won't put forth any effort towards that goal. Altitude is defined as the height of something. So when you have the right mind about something, then you will apply yourself towards that goal, and when you apply yourself real good, that means you will go real high in it. The reward of being a Christian, the ultimate goal of being a Christian, is to make it into heaven. So if you want to go to heaven, then tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, get your mind right. Work towards heaven, and just wait on your reward. I, I mean, the, the pursuit of righteousness can get a little rough. We all know that. We all know that as a Christian, this journey is not easy. I know sometimes it may seem as if you can't get the hellhounds off your track. I know sometimes it seems as if you can't find peace anywhere. But if that is you going through, I want you to turn right back to that neighbor and say, Neighbor, if that is you going through, then count it as a blessing. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you're on the right road now. Just wait for it. Yes, you're on that right road now. You are on that highway to heaven. But I want to give you some details about that highway to heaven. That highway to heaven is a straight highway. It is not that difficult of a road. The problem is that the road may appear to be a bit too long. But see, that is just it. We think that the road is long because of our own vision. We think that the road is long because we can't see the ending of the road. Because we can't see the finish line, because we can't see how the story will end, we then tend to get weary and well doing. But see, that is just it. Your vision is the problem. See, a true believer walks by faith and not by sight. The problem is you shouldn't have a vision. You should be asking God, what is it that you want for my life? And when you have completed that task, you will find out that God already gave the vision for your life. It's already written in the book. All you have to do is follow the vision, follow the book, and follow the map that God made for you. See, the enemy wants to get you off track. The enemy wants to distract you with all kinds of illusions on the road. The enemy is trying his very best to claim you for himself. But I dare you to say this morning, get behind me, Satan, for you can't have me. Find someone else to mess with, because as for me, in my house, we will serve the Lord. We will follow the Lord. We will stay on the road. Go with me to 2 Timothy, third chapter at the 12th. In verse. other words, the scripture is saying that there is no escaping persecution. You have to go through this way. If Jesus, a man who, who've done no wrong his entire life, was persecuted, then what would make you think that you, a person who committed plenty of sinful acts, would just have a VIP pass to a life without persecution? 
trials or tribulations. I mean, what would, think you, what would make you think that your road of life would just be so smooth? Now, I understand that Jesus died. I understand that Jesus paid the ultimate price. I understand that Jesus shed his blood. But watch what Jesus says in Matthew 5 and 10. Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted. This is the kingdom of heaven. People, I am sorry to inform you. No, I'm not. I'm actually happy to be able to stand here and tell you that the new heaven isn't free. The new heaven is something you have to work for. The new heaven is a full-time job. It is a job of public viewing. It is a job that everyone must see you working. However, there is a cost you have to pay to make it in to the new heaven. And the cost is your exhibition of your dedication for God by exemplifying an enthusiastic life for Christ. I think I need to say that one more time so y'all can catch it. The cost of making it to heaven is your exhibition of your dedication for God by exemplifying an enthusiastic life for Christ. Now, when you are doing that, we already understand that you have already repented been baptized both of the water and the fire. Now somebody is saying, well, how do you know that, minister? Because it is by your actions that we know you are living for Jesus the Christ. We have to stop just being hearers of the word, but we must be doers of the word. In other words, we have to be zealous for Christ. We have to be a fanatic about Christ. And everyone who sees and know you must know that you are in love with Jesus the Christ. So what is Jesus saying here in Matthew 5 and 10? Jesus is saying that if you are being persecuted for righteousness, then I am going to give you heaven as your reward. Just wait for it. But I want to get back to that question that somebody had asked earlier about why will they try to outcast you, persecute you, hinder you, kill you, hurt you, especially if all you're trying to do is live for God. If all you're trying to do is live for Jesus. Well, let me tell you why if y'all don't mind. But before I do that, let me ask this question one more time. Everyone in here has an idea of what right or wrong is. Am I right? All right. Okay, so when you are trying to be like Jesus or trying to live for Jesus, you have to understand that Jesus was called Jesus the Christ. The Christ is his title. The Christ is not his last name. The Christ derivated from the Greek word Christos. Christos means anointed. Anointed means to apply oil. Oil means knowledge. So when you are saying Jesus the Christ, you are saying Jesus, the one who applies his knowledge. Mm, Holy Ghost moving. When someone, mm, knowledge in the Bible is called light. So when someone has oil, when someone has knowledge, when someone obtains the light, when someone has Jesus, the Christ, people cannot stand you. And the reasons why people cannot stand you is because they can no longer trick you. They can no longer use you for their self gain. I don't know who I'm talking to in here. When I'm talking to somebody, but your enemies are mad right now because you're getting the truth. The truth don't preach well, but I ain't got time to entertain you. We're leaving here every other day. You better get this thing together. Amen. With Jesus, you have the ability to see when something is not right. Can I break this thing down just a little bit more? I mean, what good is it to have knowledge and you don't apply it? 
See, God is light and evil is darkness. And darkness is afraid of the light. See, darkness is afraid of the light because when light exposes darkness, it's like flipping on the light switch. As soon as you flip on the light switch, darkness flee. When a doctor or a scientist is trying to see what uh, something is, they would use a magnifying glass. But the magnifying glass is only good to blow up the subject. But if you really want to see what the subject is, it's going to take some light. Light will tell you exactly what the problem or what the object is. Stay with me. See, when you have light, when you have knowledge, when you have Jesus, you will realize that people will not like you because when light comes around, light is able to see the true motives of people's actions. Remember, God sees the heart. Now, don't get it twisted. Now, I'm not talking about anybody in here. I'm just talking about light and darkness. So before I make somebody feel some type of way, I need to move on. Mm. Matthew says, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. Isaiah says, and there's a highway to heaven. Isaiah said, and a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. It will be there for those who walk on that way. The unclean will not journey on it. The book of Proverbs says the highway of the upright is to depart from evil. See, the enemy does not want you to depart from evil. The enemy wants to keep you in darkness, keep you ignorant, keep you from knowing the truth. But watch what it says here. It says, he who watches his ways preserves his life. You got to know what to watch for. John reveals in the book of Revelation that the Lord says, because you have kept my commandments to endure with patience, I will also keep you from the hour of testing that is about to come upon the whole world to those who dwell on the earth. I am coming. Jesus says, hold fast. To what you have so that no one will take your crown. So what is Jesus saying here? He said hold fast. That means you got to wait on it. Hold fast so that no one will take your crown. See persecution is a must. Someone on something is trying to take your crown. You have to fight for your right. You have to protect your crown. I know that the hellhounds are on your trail. Now the Remen family can tell me all about it. That's back to back to back. The hellhounds are on your trail. But see, one thing that I know about dogs, when dogs are tracking you, if you temporarily want to get them off your trail, what you're going to have to do is go through some water. See, somebody losing right now. That's baptism. Once you go through some water, it only temporarily gets them off your trail. But if you really want to get the dogs off your trail, all you have to do is get on fire. Fire will remove all evidence of you. Fire is the love, is the passion, is the desire for Jesus. Once you get on fire for Jesus, you will look back and realize how far back you are or you was. TT don't exist no more. Jaron Johnson don't exist no more. All I know is Jesus. Mm, help me somebody. Help me somebody. Grant, here I'll stop by to tell you, if heaven is the prize that you're waiting for, all you have to do is get on fire, which is the Holy Ghost, which is the passion, which is the love, which is the care. Just hold on just a little while longer. Be strong and just wait for it. Have some patience. Sleep through the storm. Stay on the road. Stay on fire. Don't get weary and well-doing. For joy, peace, love, and heaven will be here in the morning. All you have to do is just wait for it. Just wait for it. Let me take this thing. I got to talk to y'all for a second. Testing, testing. Patience. In that same book of James, it, it, it tells you that you have to be slow to speak. Why? Because the enemy wants to 
distract you so that you don't have that valid line of communication so that when we are having a, a conversation, if I already jump to the end, then I don't know exactly what it is that you're going to tell me. So then that leads to an argument because you say, well, you don't understand me. Why? Because I didn't let you finish. This is what ignorance would do to you when you don't know, when you don't know the full story. Let me tell you what truth would do for you. We are all in line. And one person went and set his hand on the eye, and it burned his hand. Why is it then that I'm going to walk right behind him and put my hand on the same eye? That don't make no sense. But that's exactly what we do every single day. God's grace is sufficient. What is God's grace? The Bible. Everything that you would ever want to know will be in that book. That book is made up of New Testament and Old Testament. One word is the same, testament. The root word in testament is test. All you have to do is read the book, learn where they pass, and learn where they fail. Stay with the people that pass, forget about those that fail. Education in its purest form is simply perfecting memory. Perfecting memory. Keep eating the word of God so that when these situations come in your life, you would know exactly what to do. Jesus said, I come to give you life and to have it more abundantly. Well, if I keep making the same mistakes, I can't have no abundancy. It's common sense, people. Common sense. It is not that hard. Why is it that you got to make the same mistakes I made? Why? We can get further if we just learn to listen. But I ain't say listen from anybody. Stay in the book. God can never lie to you. Test him every day. You remember when I said this a long time ago. I wake up every day trying to prove God to be a liar. Are you exactly right? I cannot do it. I'll be trying to find a way. Now, you know, this ain't going to work. I guarantee you it ain't going to work. Next thing you know, it happens. It happens. I stood at that door, and I've been transparent with my storms. I'm always transparent. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I can't get the glory. Because if I had a, 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 a sin or a secret that I kept in the dark, when I come out of that, guess who's going to say did it? I did it. Yep, because y'all didn't know what I was going through. But if I be transparent about my situation, you can see the glory of God coming through. Because now that, that no longer removes me. You know when I used to smoke my little cigarettes? Smoke my little cigarettes. And they used to say, boy, don't you smoke in front of them people? I said, I can't help it. Because I done gave it to God already. I said, I ain't hiding from them. No, 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 no. I said, I'm not hiding from them. He sees it all. If anything, I like the words of encouragement when you knew what I was doing. When somebody said, hey, son, you shouldn't do that. You know what that's going to do? So guess what I was doing? That was building my faith. But if I don't know your storm, I can't help you. If I don't know your struggle, I can't help you. The church, we are here to help people. That's why we're here. We are the hands and feet of God. If, that was, if God didn't need no help, he wouldn't have no church. But how is it that when the church gets in trouble, we run to the world? No, just think about it. We go to finance companies, we'll, we'll go to the banks when, when the kingdom is within itself. We just can't work together because our communication is messed up, right? But we see what happens, right? We see what happened when, when Moses was trying to get the people to, to follow him to Israel. What happened was Moses started listening to the people, right? And then they wandered in the, in the wilderness for what? 40 years? Why is it that when the pastor or the man of God is trying to get something done, he can't ever get it done? Why? Because the people are still trying to run the show. If we want to get there, we just got to follow the word of God. Right? Knowledge. Knowledge. What is known. Ledge. What is clear. It's, clear. it's, it's, not, it's not a debate. These are facts. This is what we're dealing with. People of God, we have to be the people of light. We have to be the people of knowledge. 
They have to come to us. We then have to give them what is right, but we can't give them what is right if we don't know nothing ourselves. And we don't know. That's why we all leaders. 90% of us, I see, I see a lot of the kids at school. A lot of y'all are, are leaders in, in y'all facets. Y'all leaders in every capacity. Y'all leaders. Even in the school system, leaders. Dr. Grant runs stuff around there. I try. But Thomas runs stuff around the school. In everything that we do, people come to us for knowledge. That's how Christ designed it. He designed it that way. We are his people. We are the people for life. We can't be making the same mistakes over and over and over and over. God ain't playing. Jesus said, let's listen to this, and I'm going to close. Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. He didn't say forgive them for they know what they do. See, some of y'all know exactly what y'all doing. But y'all going to keep running back to God like he's just going to be. Yeah, he's going to be there. But you're going to suffer the consequences of your action. You keep on eating all the sweets. Diabetes on the way. He got a way for you to get back. Keep on smoking the cigarettes. Cancer is on his way. Keep on eating the cheeseburgers. Obesity is on his way. That's common knowledge. We know that. Take your knowledge and apply it. Jesus, the one who applies his knowledge. When you apply your knowledge, you will see the abundance come in your life. I know that don't preach well, y'all, but I promise you, in this dispensation of time that we're in, the entertainment got to cut out. It has to. My... My abundance is, is based upon you. Pastor's abundance is based upon you. That's stress. We shouldn't be stressing about the same thing that we've been preaching for the last 20 odd years, 40, 60 years. We still having these simple arguments over what? We can't get nowhere. Ministers are charged to the people. If the people don't grow, we can't grow. Our abundance is based off y'all. So if y'all don't grow, we don't grow. We understand that? Grant Hill, we have every element to be one of the leading churches in, in the Midlands. Guarantee you. Guarantee you. This is a special church full of special people. There's no reason why we should be stagnant. God is about duplication. He took 12. Look how many disciples he got today. He didn't tell them to be quiet. He said, go forth throughout all this Amen. duplication. It's just, or, or we can be like a cancerous, right? We can be like a cancer cell, right? Cancer cell, what it does, it, it makes copies of itself. And it, eventually it'll die, right? That's what Satan is doing. He's making copies of himself. Now, who you want to be, it is only good or bad. Only good or bad. Just like Jesus said, don't waste my time. Go on about your business. Go, 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 see, go, go, go to your father. Now, we claim as the church to be following Jesus the Christ, and let's follow him. From this day forward, let's not argue over our feelings. Let's go by what the word of God say. Let that be the judge. And it's the last thing I will say. I tell people, I don't judge nobody. I don't judge nobody. I promise you I don't. But you know what does judge you? The book. Just because I so happen to know the book, then I'm going to tell you, well, you're doing this where the book says you shouldn't be. That ain't me judging. That's the book. Now, if you don't live in that, that world of Christ, I ain't got nothing to say to you. I might encourage you into the family, but once you get up under this law, then we all got to follow that law, which is the book, which is the judge. So if the book say this is what the church need to do, then guess what? This is what we should do. Y'all pray my strength in the Lord.